Welcome to another Tech Stuff Tuesday. This week, we're going to talk about speaker positioning and why it matters. We're gonna take a look at three different cars with three very different setups on how they're laid out and explain the benefits of why each of them are good and how you can implement them. So let's get started with the first one. This car has actually got seven speakers in it and none of them are a sub, ironically. But positioning wise, we've got several things going on. We actually have two speakers down here behind this grill and I've removed the passenger side so you can see it. We have a mid-base driver right there and then we have a full range and that's going to take care of all of our high end including what you might consider a tweeter to cover. So we actually have a very broad spectrum happening just right here. Now you'll note that this is a separate pod with positioning that is aimed directly at the driver and the driver side is the same thing where we've got an angle up so this is going to bring the sound stage way up to your ear level. This is actually a very optimal position for being inside the door. You can tell there's nothing on the dash except for this center channel. And this center channel is also going to help bring the sound stage up. Uh, it can bridge the gap that's happening right here because again, these are down here and we have the dash that is going to be blocking some of that. You might get some reflections, that kind of thing. But on the whole, this is a very, very good idea. The center does very, very little, but it does fill in a little bit of a gap. So you have a very broad stage across here without any gaps. Uh, this can also be a very wide stage as a result of the angling and the positioning of these. Now there are also rear speakers in this car and they're tucked right back here, one on each side. And with those, we do get our rear fill and it happens to be right by your head. Those are also very, very subtle. Uh, this actually can pipe in engine noise through those rear speakers and only through the rear speakers, which I think is the primary function of why they're there. Playing music, you don't really hear them at all. Even though I've got the fade set to flat right in the middle, you don't really hear the rear speakers at all in this case. I actually prefer not having rear speakers at all, but I'm not about to disconnect them, especially when I don't hear them. And I could just balance to the front and not have to deal with any wiring or anything else anyway. So in this example, we've got great imaging coming from the doors, two speakers, which you can only really do if you have a deep door, make a custom door panel, that kind of thing, the center channel, and the rears. Again, we don't have any sub. We can do time alignments with this. That's kind of part of the DSP that's built into the factory unit. Not all cars will have that, but this one does. And now we'll look at the second example. In our second example, we have something a little bit more traditional. We have a mid-range down on the door, a tweeter up at the A-pillar in the front, and then we also have rear speakers in the rear deck, and the subwoofer is also in the rear deck. So the advantage of this setup is having the tweeter up here, we can have the stage get raised up just a little bit, but we do have separation between the mid and the tweeter that are going to be some considerations, especially if we have any type of overlap between those. With this setup, we can have a higher sound stage and a wider sound stage because they're on the level with our ears uh, and we can have them further out of the door and they aren't being blocked by the rest of the panel. Highs are affected a lot more by being off axis or having something in the way. So this method is very common and even a lot of uh, everyday cars um, your Impalas and Corollas and Camrys and that kind of thing. Those are very typical cars that can have this type of setup to achieve a better sound quality on a very low budget. This type of setup is also something that you can do in a car that didn't have that originally by simply adding tweeters up here on the pillar or maybe on the dash, though that might be difficult or more popular in the pillar like that. So that is something, even the, a basic system to begin with, you can do this setup to make it better. So now let's look at the back. Now in the back, the speakers are not in fact in the rear doors, they are in the rear deck. So there's one here and one on the other side, and there's an infinite baffle subwoofer right here under the rear deck. So the advantage of infinite baffle, we can get our location in a, a very space saving spot, uh, but there are some limitations to infinite baffle. We can't apply much power, uh, it has to be a very well-designed driver to sound very good because you don't have an enclosure that you can kind of manipulate to make it sound any better. 
and having the rear speakers in the rear deck, the person sitting in the back, we can have this at a very low volume to not affect anything in the front. Uh, in some cases, this could be a different source. They can listen at a very comfortable level without having to blast it in the front. For time alignments, this also makes it very easy to get everything for a rear fill in the front. For the last example, I've actually done something pretty custom in here. The factory speakers would normally be in the door, and those are the only two speakers in this model. There was an option for rear speakers, but this model did not have it. So there are spots for it. I've left them out. I've never had rear speakers in this car. What I have done is added speakers right there in the kick panels. Now those are actually made into the floor of this car, so I didn't lose any legroom. You could add kick panels in a couple different ways. This is a very small car. That's the best way to do that so you don't lose any foot room, particularly on the driver's side when you've got a clutch pedal. So you really need all the space you can have down there. So that's what I've done in here. Now there are some benefits to that. Because of the positioning, I can aim that exactly where I want it to because there's custom, but also it's aimed directly at the driver. Now I'm using a coaxial, these actually are swag six and a halves that are in here, as opposed to using a component set because I don't have to have a separate tweeter that I could potentially kick, get kicked around, but also the mid and the tweeter are coming from the same spot, so I don't have to worry about timing or gaps. All of the sound being produced is coming from the same location, and that was going to give us a better sound quality. If you had uh, components with these, I would have the tweeter directly next to the mid, but using a coaxial will get the same effect, but in a more compact package, and these are incredible sounding speakers anyway, so it doesn't matter. There was a time when I did have some mid bass drivers in the doors, I had eights in there where the five and a quarters would go from the factory, but I don't have those in there right now. Uh, but in doing this, we can get a pretty good sound if we just add a subwoofer. This car did not have a sub from the factory, so I've added one for SPL setup, and this is our testing of a low baller 12 back here. But it's obviously not something you'd want to drive around with in this setup or this appearance. But because I use this for SPL, uh, I could swap out the sub very easily in this, uh, but that's not exactly pertinent to what we have going on here in terms of sound quality or the benefits. So from a positioning standpoint, all of this is very important because if we have it coming across here, like it would be from the factory and in a lot of cars, especially if it's way down in the door, everything is gonna sound like it's way down here. And the idea is to have it sound like it's up here, right at your ear level. This is also going to give us a broader sound stage because we're emitting this way. So while we might get some reflections off the door, that kind of thing, that could actually help in bringing the stage width along with it. Uh, in some cases, I've seen it where rolling the windows down made the sound get wider because it can go this way. You don't have the reflections coming back. In your car, what should you do to get the best sound quality possible? Well, in this case, it was build something custom. If you can build kick panels in the floor, that's going to be an ideal scenario if you have something like this in the door. But if you can't go that far, you could put a tweeter up here. Like in the Mercedes, we had a mid down here and a tweeter up here, and that's going to bring the stage up. That's going to give us better imaging, a better stage, and that's going to improve your sound quality. Another option would be like in the first car, where we had everything in that door, but things were aimed how they needed to be, kind of like the idea of this, but all contained in the door. In a future video, I'll get into time alignments, how to set them, and why they're important, as I mentioned before. But if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed for all future videos. Hit the notification bell. You can support us on Patreon. Find us on Instagram and Facebook as well. Those are in the description below. Make sure you shop emfcaraudio.com for all of your car audio needs. We're an authorized dealer for XS Power, Sundown Audio, EMF Audio, SBC. We've got Sound Deadener now, Spools of Wire. We've got all kinds of good stuff on there. Check that out on emfcaraudio.com. And I'll see you again in another Tech Stuff Tuesday. Hey, now that everybody's gone, i got a discount for you because you hung out. You go on emfcaraudio.com. Use promo code YouTube at checkout. You get 10% off those swag six and a halves that I mentioned that were in the CRX. 75 watts RMS, four ohms, sound incredible. You can use them on your motorcycle, on your ATV, your UTV, you can use them in your car, your boat. Very popular with the boat crowd. They're great sounding speakers. 
go pick them up. We just got the new ones in stock. Slightly improved. Did another video that shows the differences between those. But go pick them up. 10% off using code YouTube. Y-O-U-T-U-B-E in case you can't spell YouTube. Use that at checkout. Get 10% off and you still get free shipping. Go pick up a pair or a bunch of pair. Go get them.